So um, at CES 2025, um, there was a kind of um, unannouncement of the new RDNA 4 graphics cards. Um, before the show, we actually had a pre-brief which had a few slides um, giving performance expectations and such. However, um, the AMD keynote came and went and there was no actual um, reveal for RDNA 4 graphics cards. Kind of strange, bearing in mind that they did seem to be present at the AMD booth. Um, now we found out that the 9070 line, um, RDNA 4, is actually going to be coming out in March. Uh, obviously a strategic move. We've got this question here from supporter who's dubbed himself question generated by Jensen GPT. <laughs> and uh, the question goes like this. AMD just quietly announced that RDNA 4 will be releasing in March. That's despite the fact that warehouses and retail stockrooms in stores around the world have RX 9000 cards right now, and a lot of them. I feel like AMD and their AIBs would not have sent these out now unless they were originally planning on releasing them in January or February, since retailers don't like holding on to stock they can't sell. My question is, seems like AMD originally wanted these around the time out, around the time Blackwell launched, but something made them change their mind. Would Radeon as a brand be in a better state right now if AMD just stopped caring about Nvidia's release cadence and just followed their own? Releasing new GPUs when the hardware and software are both 100% ready. This is what they do with CPUs for the most part. So why not GPUs? RDNA 3 ended up being pretty good in the long run, but it launched with unfinished drivers and issues, not to mention bad pricing, which tainted early reviews and hurt the brand's image. I feel that that's a lot more harmful than just waiting till everything is ready and good pricing can be figured out. Well, that's an interesting point. The thing is, that might actually be what AMD is doing by holding onto yeah. the cards. It's a strategic move. By um, waiting until March, then essentially um, AMD will know exactly what's happening with uh, the Blackwell GPUs, the 5070, 5070 Ti, and they can change their pricing and their plans accordingly. And if there is you know, technical improvements happening in the background in the meantime, I can only really see that as a good thing. What do you make about this, Alex? I mean, for me, I would like them to, like every product, actually have it be ready by launch. And uh, I can't possibly know why. Uh, Frank Azor made mention of them wanting to adjust, I believe, kind of like like adjust pricing maybe, or adjust marketing positioning and stuff like that. And I think that's all very reasonable. Um, it doesn't necessarily help, though. Like, I think it was just a really awkward situation in general. Um and the reason why is I, I presume it's the RTX 5070 is the biggest problem. Uh, like this weird gap between RTX 57 and RTX 5070 Ti where the price for the 5070, as Oliver said, seemed surprisingly reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was a shocker to a lot of people, maybe AMD included. Uh, but regardless of that, I would really love to see them come out when they do come out in March to have a number of AMD FSR 4 titles, like a good number like a really good solid number and for them to say like like flat out this is just better than fsr3 um our gpu is now scaling more towards the future show a bunch of games running with ray tracing that sucked on rdna2 but like hey do you have an rdna2 card this is a way better card and i would like for them to actually just start talking about the future when they do this so i'm just like this uh this this person here i am also want them to re <laughs> uh, bring out products that are ready and not uh constantly adjusting price after launch or constantly um requiring new drivers to mm -hmm. get it actually running well yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. whatever what do you reckon yeah i mean i think that amd's messaging on this whole thing has been a little bit confusing and maybe they missed a step by not announcing at ces but Obviously, I do think they gained something from understanding where NVIDIA is in terms of their sales. Are they actually selling MSRP or are they going to be above MSRP as people are, are expecting with the, the units possibly selling out there and retailers pricing appropriately? Um, I'm also very interested in seeing FSR4 there at launch and in a good number of titles and in good shape and the drivers in good shape and all that stuff because it is it, like it is frustrating also not even just hardware products but software products when you're reviewing games that are clearly not ready <laughs> and it just feels like you as the reviewer are being done a disservice and the end consumer is being right. done a disservice so if they have to hold for another two months another month and a half whatever to get them in in a reasonably good state and to have them positioned well against nvidia's line of products 
I think it's perfectly fine. It's not like they're withholding some performance behem behemoth <laughs> here necessarily. They're withholding something that is like a, a mid-range part, presumably, and hopefully will be delivering in uh, in machine learning performance and in ray tracing performance in the way that uh, we'd like it to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really interesting because um, where there is a void of information, then obviously suddenly we start to get these uh, fantastic leaks. It happens every time, uh, particularly like uh, with AMD products where, you know, there's a new NVIDIA killer coming along. And um, yeah, there's been, you know, all manner of um, uh, leaks for the 9070 XT suggesting it's like up there with the 7900 XTX. Um, I'm kind of baffled by hmm. a lot of this stuff. Um because it would be the biggest generational leap AMD has ever done, possibly even more than NVIDIA has done. I mean, we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the XTX is, is a phenomenally capable part based on its specifications. And uh, the specifications that we're aware of for the 9070 are actually considerably more conservative. So the only explanation, yes. uh, with a lower power budget, by the way. So the you know the only explanation would be like a gigantic architectural leap, which doesn't really make sense. The um the the slides, the paucity of information we have about RDNA four, um, the CES slides were suggesting it um, the top end product kind of taps out around seventy nine hundred XT level of performance, which is uh, which is absolutely fine, if not great, if it's delivered at a decent price point, right? And I think that's probably what it's down coming down to. AMD waiting to see what those 70 class products from NVIDIA actually do, and then having a really good discussion about pricing. The question is, you know, pricing, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of baffling because um, uh, AM, uh, AMD don't ever seem to make any headway against NVIDIA, even when they have much better price versus performance ratios. I think we are reaching the point where obviously NVIDIA's marketing is is doing great, but also the fact that we are talking about stuff that isn't based on hardware at this point. You know, the, mm -hmm. the software package that NVIDIA is delivering is, is first class. It's actually, you know, I was just thinking about going back to, I think it was um, maybe the Maxwell Editor's Day, where they were talking about stuff like turf works, NVIDIA turf works. And it's like all of these sort of um, technologies, these black box technologies that NVIDIA wanted to add to uh, uh, developer games, which weren't, you know, that great and, you know, didn't really make a difference. Now we, we are where we are, where we're looking at these amazing neural rendering demos, where we're seeing the DLSS transformer model being released and, you know, the response based on what I'm seeing online is only positive. So, you know, there's there's just a completely different arms race at this point. And it is a question of, are these features nice to have or essential? And I think, you know, DLSS has moved from a nice to have to an essential part of the GPU to the point where if you've got a 20 series card, would you really want a, a GPU that doesn't have DLSS? And I think, you know, that's the main challenge facing FSR 4, um, it's a battle on many fronts because I think the quality, based on what you saw with Ratchet, is is well up there, right? I mean, this was yes, this was definitely. this was yeah. fantastic stuff. I mean, it was actually highly fortuitous, Alex, that the demo that they showed was basically the game that you use to highlight all of the <laughs> um, problems that reconstruction-based technologies have, and it kind of came out with flying colours, right? But yeah, you know, they're still going to be behind on support. You know, how do you do that? Do you do, you know, do you have some sort of uh, unofficial DLSS wrapper that takes those um, DLSS mm. inputs and puts them into FSR4? How do you, you know, because NVIDIA has basically invested in DLSS for what, you know, six coming up on seven years now. How do you catch up with that? I think there's a really big sort of um, question that AMD has to answer here. I mean, Thoughts? Where do you wow. go? If you've got great hardware that's great priced and it's not working, where do you go next? Uh, well, I actually love the idea of an AMD-sponsored wrapper for DLL's <laughs> calls uh, to, to DLSS <laughs> to get around. Because I think the issue is that it requires... FSR 4 is going to require a game to have at least FSR 3.1. Yeah. And that's uh, not a lot of titles. Uh, because that's when they like fully officially switched to a DLL model, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
yeah, if they could get around that, and I think it wouldn't be below AMD because if, I think at least on the um, you know GPU programming side of things, they are actually now uh, kind of taking advantage of CUDA's marketplace and software packaging, like building off of that, and them doing that as well too for FSR four. I think it would be amazing because then you could get it into a whole bunch of other really old titles that never had FSR four. You could get it into control. You could get it into, yeah. um, you know, I don't think it's also in stuff like Metro Exodus. It's not in a lot of titles. And I, th- I actually, have, I find that idea fascinating, Rich. Yeah. Um, so, well, it's, it's yeah, I more, would like to see that. It's all the more fascinating <laughs> from an NVIDIA's owner perspective, because with the NVIDIA app, they're literally uh, injecting new DLSS into old DLSS games going back to like 2020. And Mm -hmm. this is kind of remarkable where you can buy a GPU. I mean, obviously, when you buy a new GPU, you expect higher performance levels, right? But what you don't uh, expect is to be able to increase the uh, image quality of games that released like five, four or five years ago. This is like... Pretty pretty nuts stuff. It's it's super good. <laughs> I love to see yeah. it. <laughs> it just highlights. It's one highlight of how software is making a difference now, uh, in a ways which we just aren't really appreciating. Possibly in reviews. I just love the mm-hmm. way that uh, Cyberpunk comes out with a new transformer model, and people are now testing the transformer model on games we didn't have access to in the in the uh, we didn't have period. Access, yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, um, the DLL a new frontier. Is transformative. Yeah, new tr- frontier here. I would also just like you though, Rich, everything you said I 100% agree with. It's just AMD like it's a tough position and the software aspect side of things is so much more overriding and important now even for legacy GPU parts like it wasn't in the past that you had a GeForce you know 4200 Ti and then six years later a GPU would release that makes your GPU better like your GeForce 440 you know 4200 Ti was actually in the waste bin of history by this point in time it wouldn't get better over time so it's like it's it's a totally weird situation and I think AMD just needs to embrace some of the Nvidia strategies um and they've been doing a good I think FSR4 is going to be like their first really big splash in the in this regard mm-hmm. Antilag unfortunately had this abortive launch mm-hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just going back to that latency discussion we had. You know, it's like the whole sort of uh, latency issues barely been touched on in reviewing, but um, it, it is actually quite important. I'm actually quite interested to see what baseline latency is between vendors, even if the game is actually running at the same frame rate. That's that's going to be quite interesting. You know, we're talking about the latency hit of um, um, uh, DLSS four, right? But how many people are actually turning on the anti-lag uh, control panel feature in um, both NVIDIA and uh, AMD GPU control panels? You know, why? <laughs> it's just kind of bizarre to me. There's this kind of big sort of gray area about latency, which we haven't really got um, enough data on. 